is regenerative agriculture? How do you run your farm? How's this different and better than conventionally run farms? I recently had the opportunity to visit Sterling Whitley at Whitley Bottom Bison Ranch in Southeast Texas. He's had this land in his family for a couple hundred years since his grandfather had it. But only ever so recently in 2016, he started to put bison on it and raise them regeneratively. I was able to spend the entire day with Sterling and interview him about his regenerative farm. We had an amazing conversation and as we were driving throughout the different plots of land, I got to get up close and personal with some of these bison and for me, it was pretty much a dream come true. Peace, serenity, Yeah, you know. There's a calmness about it, Yeah, about them, Yeah, about being out here. After we spent some time driving around, we sat down with Sterling and he described to me in his own words what regenerative agriculture is. So regenerative farming to me would mean utilizing the resources that are available as opposed to adding your own input or uh, man-made products. Mm -hmm. We allow nature to give back to us what we want from nature. Right. And as we're driving through the plots here, there's different areas of land and you rotate them every so often so right. that way they don't overgraze in right. one area. Right. How is that better than just you know going out and buying feedlot cattle? So the problem with overgrazing for one reason would be you'd have no grass uh, and then two, you'd have a lot of unsafe conditions as far as your manure, just so your parasite load becomes higher, which means now your animals are more susceptible to becoming parasite prone and parasites basically meaning they have something going on within the inside of them. They're sick, sick animals. Yeah. Yes, a lot of those producers, they will go and process those animals and in result, someone eats that meat, buys that meat, and they don't know that that was a sick animal. You see, regenerative agriculture is really just the way that animals have always roamed the earth for as long as animals have existed. But say you have animals raised in conventional feeding operations. You have tens of thousands of cows crammed into very tight spaces, usually on desert land where the soil is basically non-existent. The cows are then fed a lot of grain like corn and soy. They're pumped full of vaccines to grow them faster. They're pumped full of antibiotics because they are developing diseases because they're grouped too closely together. When animals are raised in this type of environment, they eat an unnatural diet of grain, but they still go through that natural fermentation digestive process. So they are burping out methane into the environment and it gets rained back down that carbon molecule gets rained back down into the environment but it has nowhere to go because those cows weren't creating healthy soil but regenerative agriculture on the other hand this is the most humane way possible to raise animals in nature because in a nutshell, regenerative agriculture is really just when the animals sequester more carbon into the soil than they're emitting into the atmosphere. When ruminant animals like cows or bison eat grass, they eat these carbon molecules that they basically ferment in their one stomach called a rumen, and then they burp that back up and then they re-swallow that fermented grass into different stomachs. This fermentation process creates greenhouse gases like methane, this is a very natural process, and they burp this out just naturally into the atmosphere. This methane then goes up into the atmosphere, then it gets rained back down. It's then sequestered into the soil, which then grows new grass which the bison just eat that grass and repeat the process. This is a carbon cycle. The soil is a living being. And if we're putting things on it every year because that's the way grandpa did it or dad did it, but we're killing the living being, then we can't expect the animal to go eat something that's a dead being and for it to be great for us. So if we feed this as a living being, let the leaf decompose and turn into fertilizer, just let nature be nature. This soil, God created it to give the plant what it needs. And when the bison eats the plant, that has what it needs. Now, when I eat the bison, I'm eating something that I need and I get it out of the bison. But if a animal is eating something that has no nutrition and then I eat the animal that has no nutrition, then how can I expect to get nutrition? It just yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. 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 But where did things start to go wrong? Now, it might surprise you that just two to 300 years ago, in about the 17, late 1700s, early 1800s, we had about 60 million bison roaming the Great Plains of North America. But at that time, the American army wanted to force out the Native Americans. And the best way to do that was to cut off their food supply. This was the bison. The bison supplied the natives with shelter, 
tools, clothing, and more. They relied off the bison for pretty much everything. So the best way to control that population was to cut that off altogether. And reports have shown that by the year 1900, the American army killed off all the bison except for about four to 500. We went from 60 million down to 500. But thanks to conservative efforts, in 2016, the Obama administration finally declared the bison as the national mammal. And this protected the bison and was able to help regrow the bison population back up to over 500,000. They'll eat a seed here, they'll go poop it out a quarter mile from here, and now that grass is there because this animal took that grass there. Mm -hmm. There's no animal hooves in that ground manicuring it and making it better eventually that ground is not doing what it was supposed to do if it's dying because there hasn't been any manure or any movement on it for 40 50 60 maybe 100 years now we take the movement back to that area we take the manure to that area we take the seeds to that area and now we created another living being on land that's already mm -hmm. existing which in return helps the environment. And when you pass it down to your children and their children's children, yes. it's gonna be a, a lot, it's gonna keep getting better. That's, that's, better. that's, that's, that's what we believe, that's what we hope for. But you have to hit the ground running every day pursuing greatness. That's what we're pursuing. We're pursuing greatness. If one thing is clear from this, not all meat is the same. Not all animals are the same. Not all environments are the same. We had 100 million animals roaming freely, regenerating the soil naturally throughout all of time. We need more regeneratively raised animals in our environment, just raised differently, because it's not the cow that's the problem, it's the how. Now it might sound counterintuitive, but the best way that you can help your health and the health of the environment is to eat more red meat, because the more we can support regenerative farms, regenerative agriculture, the better off our health is gonna be and the health of our planet is gonna be. Because too often in the media, we hear red meat is problematic for our health, that we need to limit it to help our health and to help the environment. If there's one thing I encourage you to do this week, go visit your local farmer and see how they're treating their animals, how they're raising their animals. Because getting closer connected to your food source is one of the best things that you can do for your overall health. I appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed this episode, we got a ton more coming to you. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Ancestral Supplements. We have a lot more great content coming your way. Be sure to share this out with somebody that you know needs it most, and I'll talk to you next time.